I think that Lent is a time for us to enlarge our hearts and to be more merciful. Uh, last Monday, the Gospel reading told us, don't judge, and then told us that the measure with which we measure mercy is the measure that will be measured out to us. So I look at Lent as, let's get as big a measure as possible. You know, sometimes we can be expert judges of other people, and uh, a lot of times we can be really good at making excuses for ourselves. I think part of Lent is engaging in practices and disciplines that allow us to see other people through the eyes of Jesus, to hear other people through the ears of Jesus, to judge a little less, to be a little more understanding, uh, to grow our hearts insofar as we put ourselves in someone else's shoes. All in all, I think it's a time for us to move our world, make it a little less me-centered and a little more other-centered. People still do give things up for Lent, and it's good uh, because it helps us to, to build up competency. So I love bowling. I'm a competitive bowler. And one of the worst things I do is when I get out to compete in league, uh, I'll pull my head up early and I will yank the ball across my body. Uh, you know, we're told in every sport, keep your eye on the target. In baseball, keep your eye on the ball. Uh, and so what my coach will often tell me is, uh, here's some exercises for you to do that's going to help you to keep your head down. Here's some things to do that you need to practice so that when you get out onto the lane during league night, you will be less likely to yank the ball. Uh, that's kind of a, a small example of what Lent is like. We engage in these small disciplines, these little practices that help us build virtues, uh, that help us be more competent at life, if you will. The goal is for us to flourish, to be a little more courageous, a little more moderate, a little more prudential. And so uh, practices that we can take on that help us build up these virtues are really good. And of course, the things we really want to build up are our faith, hope, and love. And so not only the discipline of giving something up, but also the discipline of doing something, uh, giving something, listening better, uh, being more aware of the people around us, all of those things can help us to flourish. So every friar in the community is going to take on their, their individual practice of Lent, but then we also do stuff communally together. And so there's certain charities that, that we will give to as a community, and then there's certain prayers and observances uh, that we take up together. And you know, it's always easier to do these things when you know uh, you're doing them with somebody else. And then of course, liturgical celebration is really important to us as well. Uh, so we will spend some extra time uh, preparing the, the Triduum liturgies uh, and we'll have a big celebration of Easter together, which is the most important holiday on the church calendar. Uh, finally, the, the feast of Christ's victory over death itself, death and sin. My message to the Providence College community would be, this Lent, prepare for joy at Easter. Lent reminds us of how much we're in debt. It reminds us that we're imperfect people. God, who we believe is all-powerful, almighty, all-knowing, who has no need of his creatures, nonetheless chooses to love us. And he sends his only son to live with us, laugh with us, cry with us, eat with us, drink with us, and then eventually die for our sins but then rise again to conquer both sin and death. That is a message of great joy. Easter captures the radicality of what it means to be a Christian, that God himself reaches out his hand in friendship, that God himself calls us friends. And so to renew ourselves in this message that, yes, we're not perfect people, but that this does not matter because Jesus Christ is to renew our worship of God who comes to save us, and to renew our love of our fellow human beings who are also redeemed by Him.